Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got a review for you of a fantastic new anthology, Enter Boogeyman. So you may have seen a week ago I put up an announcement video for this anthology. Um, so I was contacted a little while ago by Asheron, the publisher, asking me if I'd like to partner up with them um, and do an announcement for it. So it launches today on Kickstarter. So that previous video has a few more details and some other information about it. Um, I said to them when they contacted me, yes, I'd be happy to do that, but I would want to do a full honest review as well separately. Um, and that is what this video today is. So this is a completely honest review of the book. Um, what I haven't seen is the actual physical book that they are offering on Kickstarter. So obviously that's not available yet, um, but it's a, like a deluxe hardcover edition. The Kickstarter, the Kickstarter launches today and I'll leave a description uh, I'll leave in the description for this video a link to that Kickstarter so you can see all the kind of details and pricing and things like that. So what they provided me with was a digital copy. That's what I've read and, and that's what I will be reviewing today. Um, and the good news is it was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. So it is a collection of 18 um, horror short stories all themed around the, the concept of the boogeyman uh, and these are short stories that I would say are kind of what I consider to be the perfect length uh, by and large for a short story so they they all take about 25 minutes or most of them take about 25 minutes to read so kind of enough to read in your lunch break um, at work some of them are a little bit shorter one of them funnily enough the one from Stephen King uh, is quite a bit longer uh, but the King story is good uh, it's, it's well worth reading um, but not my favorite in the collection I have to say there were some other stories here that I thought were were better than the King one um, so let me quickly tell you um, who all the authors are um, so you start the collection starts with uh, an introduction from Poppy Z Bright which is really interesting so just an introduction about the concept of the boogeyman in, in popular culture and, and folklore um, so an excellent introduction to, to the volume um, and then the stories are by uh, Linda D. Addison, Ramsey Campbell, Richard Chismar, uh, Brian Evanson, Gemma Files, Stephen King, Gwendolyn Keist, John Langan, Joel Lansdale, Graham Masterton, uh, Carolina Mog uh, Mogielska, and that's a, a partnership with Graham Masterton, that one, Richard Christian Matheson, uh, John Shirley, Lucy A. Snyder, Craig Spector, Anna Taborska, Lucy Taylor, Lisa Tuttle, and Mercedes M. Yardley. So a lot of names there that you will recognise. Some, you know, some of the really big names in horror. Uh, some, you know, possibly you won't recognise as well. So some of these authors were new to me, um, but very glad to have read stories by them because, as I say, this is this is a very strong collection. Um, so let me talk to you a bit about the theme of the collection then, because I thought it was a really interesting one. And when I, you know, when I was first offered the book to to read, I thought, well, you know, Boogeyman's kind of a it, it didn't feel to me like that interesting a theme but actually when you dig into it it really is and um um poppy z bright gets under the skin of this a bit in the introduction but the stories really do as well so the boogeyman is an interesting concept because it's something that you know adults used to frighten children. So, you know, the concept of the boogeyman is one that has been used to, to keep kids in line, basically, over the years. So that in itself is kind of interesting, that, that control of children by adults. But I think the thing that's at the heart of the of the, the, the boogeyman and why it's so interesting and, and fascinating for, you know, when we are kids, the idea of the boogeyman, as terrifying as it is, is also kind of fascinating. And I think this concept is, as a, even as a kid, you kind of know that the boogeyman isn't real, you, but you know that adults are telling you, you know, adults are telling you about the boogeyman, but you know it's not real. Um, but there's that nagging doubt, isn't there? You know, what if it is real? So adults are, you know, are telling you about this thing. All your friends are saying, oh, no, don't believe the boogeyman. It's, it's not real. But, but what if it is? Um, and that concept that adults might be wrong is a terrifying concept. So, you know, in the, in the dead of night, when you wake up and you're alone in your bedroom and it's dark and you can see the closet in the corner, the boogeyman can feel very real. And that concept, that 
maybe it is real, maybe adults are wrong, maybe there is more to this world than we understand. It's kind of almost at the centre of, of what it is to be human, isn't it? Um, so it's it's a fantastically creepy and fascinating subject for, for a book, I think. Um, and as I say, a lot of the stories do a really good job of, of digging into that. And as you would expect, a lot of the stories touch on, you know, kind of childhood and childhood fears and things like that. Um the other thing I would say about the collection before I talk about some of the individual stories and, and talk about my favourites is editing a um, editing a collection like this is not easy. Um, and Alessandro Manzetti, the editor, has done a really, really good job of a picking excellent stories for it, but also making sure those stories are presented and ordered in a way that means they don't trip over each other. So you do get some stories in here that kind of explore similar themes. So there's a couple of there's a couple of stories, for example, that are kind of about the concept of that overlap between um, the boogeyman and the imaginary friend, and and the the idea that the boogeyman could actually be a positive force in some ways. Um, but by you know if you put those two stories together, the collection wouldn't work. It would fall apart at that point. Um, and there's lots of kind of subtle choices that Manzetti has made in terms of how these stories are ordered, which stories go next to each other and things like that, that mean they don't trip over each other in terms of like themes, but also you don't get a kind of a clash of, of like author voices. So you don't get two stories next to each other that feel jarring because they're, the authorial voice is very different. Um, so he's done a really good job, I think, of, of putting the pulling the collection together in a way that makes it work as a single book rather than just a collection of short stories so i just wanted to to shout that out because i think it's important to recognize the contribution of editors to books like this and not just think about the individual stories um and there are you know there's a range of stories in here so whilst they all have the same theme they approach it in very different ways so there's some there's some kind of black comedy in here um that, you know a couple of the stories are laugh out loud funny at times um there's some really creepy stuff there's some kind of gripping thrilling type stuff all sorts of different things there's some that explore um folklore some that have you know modern day setting there's some that are quite poignant as well that kind of reflect back on childhood and things like that um so yeah a really nice range of different styles of story within the book whilst all you know united by that theme of the boogeyman so let's talk about my favorites and so there are four stories i wanted to pick out as my my favorites of the collection um so the first of those is macintosh willie uh by ramsey campbell which is as campbell's stories often are reflects back on a on a you know the, the the Britain and particularly Northern England of of the past, and this one is particularly set around a park and this creepy figure in in a park, um, and it really took me back to you know to my own childhood and like hanging around in parks and, <laughs> and things like that. Although fortunately nothing like what happens in this story happened to me, but yeah, a really really creepy story and and also taps into that kind of powerlessness of being a kid in terms of adult not believing you when you tell them that something weird or bad has happened um so yeah i thought that was a was a really really good one one of the more moving stories uh was the long goodbye by craig specter which is a lovely story i mean creep creepy as hell in parts but also a lovely story about alzheimer's so about a guy um and the kind of like the framing for the story really is this guy going to therapy to, trying to deal with the fact that his mother is suffering from alzheimer's and, and you know how that is impacting him as well as impacting her so really moving interesting and very very well written story i thought it was i thought it was great but again a story that reflects back on childhood so there's a lot in this story about um, the the narrator and his brother watching a particularly creepy episode of The Outer Limits, which I need to remember to to find on, on YouTube and watch myself. Um, so that was another really good one. Another one, which again has lots of themes of, of childhood, uh, was Only Children by Gemma Files, um, which is a really a really interesting and quite disturbing story about this woman who kind of came to came to realise the boogeyman was real as a kid. Um, and how that has kind of played on her life and, and shaped her whole life, basically. Um, so that was another excellent one. Um, but my favourite story in the collection, and I thought this was a truly excellent short story. I think it's the... I'm trying to think of a horror short story I've read recently 
that was better and I, and I can't I thought this was a really really excellent story and it's by an author I've never read before uh, so the author is uh, Brian Evanson uh, and the story is called Long Black Being so this is in many ways a kind of classic boogeyman story so it has this older sister telling her younger brother about this being this this creature called Long Black Being who's like the boogeyman but you get tied, so you so you get that whole thing of that whole uncertainty from the brother of is it is it real or not? But then there's a whole other layer of, I suppose, thematic stuff about how how parents use the boogeyman to, to frighten children, but how there are you know real world horrors out there as well as imaginary ones. Just a fantastically written story. He crams so much into you know, a, a short story. And it's a story that I've reflected on a number of times since finishing it. I really did think it was excellent. It's it's thought-provoking, it's moving at times, it's quite sad at times, but it's also really, really, really creepy. Intensely creepy and really disturbing as well. Um, just a truly excellent short story. I think the, the collection is worth reading just for that one story. It really was fantastic. So yes, those are my thoughts on Enter Boogeyman. As I say, I really think it's worth checking out. I'll leave a link to the Kickstarter um, in the description for the video so you can check that out. But yeah, it's a very, very good short story collection. So if you're into horror short stories, um, I definitely think it's worth a look. So I hope you found that interesting. Do let me know in the comments um, if you've got any other recommendations for uh, horror short story anthologies. And by that I mean ones by multiple authors rather than uh, by a single author. I'm definitely keen after reading this to check out some more. Um, so anyway, I will leave it there and say, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.